वेलकम टू टुडेज एडिशन ऑफ मेन स्ट्रीम आप सब नु प्यार परी सत श्री अकाल आई एम हरप्रीत सिंह तूर अस्सलाम वालेकुम आदाब एंड शलोम वाह वी जस्ट आर कमिंग आउट ऑफ आयोवा काउकस एंड वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट दैट एज वी ऑल सी व्हाट्स गोइंग ऑन व्हाट हैपेंड इन आयोवा इवन दो वी हैड बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट इट दैट द ट्रंप इज गोइंग टू बी द डोमिनेंट फिगर but the way the whole thing has turned out it is more than what uh, even most of the people who think uh, they do all, this is their bread and butter they do day and day out uh, doing the data analysis voter studies you know conducting the um, survey this and that and they were expecting nikki haley to come in second place but it didn't happen she came into third place by a couple of hundred votes uh from um, <clears throat> uh ran desantis but the question again is out of 99 counties in, uh, in iowa trump took 98 out of them and one county went to nikki haley and ran desantis even though he came in second but he did not win any county in there and now fast forward to new hampshire where the primary will be next uh, this coming tuesday the question will be how this whole uh, process is going to evolve how this uh, um upcoming new hampshire primary uh, may throw up nikki haley which is being looked at at one of the possibility because John Sununu who is very uh, popular uh, governor there he has endorsed Nikki Haley and interestingly the issue here is that whatever Trump is saying he has become a cult figure in this country for republicans in particular and uh, even those are republicans who are you know who don't like what he is doing they are accepting him uh like they say you know they have already surrendered that okay you know we don't have a choice but we do not want to vote for a democrat and nobody actually is looking at the bigger picture of what is going to happen what would happen where we are where we may end up uh actually uh you know um down the road as america as a country what could happen to america as a country nobody is really looking at it because the issue again is uh um what do we call that how um the world politics actually is um playing uh, i'm just uh, trying to get my laptop also work uh, i was looking for a few things in there so sorry if i am not looking at the camera right now it doesn't mean i'm ignoring you so as of today what is happening in the world politics is crazy if i may say so in layman's term because we have these pockets of fights going on which may actually uh end up being more than one war we first had um uh you know the civil war in uh, yemen we have somalia going on a civil war for years and nobody was paying attention to that uh, to those was too much then ukraine happened and because of the war in ukraine all of a sudden the inflation went up because uh, the majority of the wheat and sunflower comes from uh, ukraine so now those supplies are out and inflation went through india stopped uh, exporting rice and wheat that actually contributed further to the inflation and then the tension between china and us about the trade uh, issues that was another issue so all these things started actually um one way or the other contributing to uh the inflation and that actually has become one of the <clears throat> cry to support trump that okay 
under him, you know, we did not have that kind of inflation, even though inflation has been tamed. Number two, the jobs being created right now are the jobs which are actually in technology and um, other um, like solar, solar panel and some other infrastructure projects. So that is not trickling down yet. So overall, I have to admit here one thing that Trump is telling you what you want to hear not what you should be listening to or what you should be told or informed. Just pick up the term whichever you like. Because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, yes, I understand we all want our families, you know, to do better than what we, our parents did and we want our kids to do better than what we are doing. But somehow that whole thing is being lost right now. And in the meantime, the other challenges, including the climate cha uh, change challenge, is actually not being discussed the way it should be. Look at, we actually in New York, we had a snow after close to 700 days. Just imagine, I'm living in this city since 1983 and I haven't seen anything like this. And this is all because of the climate change, you know? And uh, Republicans in general, and Trump in particular, he sells there is no climate change. He's like, no, no, no to everything. It is his, it is for him, it is his way or highway. It's like they say, it's either my way or the highway. That's what it is. But coming down to the issues, when we really look at what to expect, how this 2024 is going to go. Like in my one of the previous show, I discussed that how many places there are going to be elections. Um, we already had an election in Bangladesh. We are heading into an election in uh, Pakistan. And then we have a, an election in uh, India. And if we look at, then we have election in UK and USA. So even though there are other smaller countries where elections are happening, uh, I think Ukraine also have election this year. But there is one thing which we need to look at that more than a quarter of the population of the planet as of today is going to go to vote for a government, whether the new or the old one. It doesn't matter which one. But one thing is for sure that there are elections taking place. And while the elections are taking place, every other country is playing backdoor politics through either uh, smartphones using TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and all those kind of, uh, you know, media messaging uh, operators which is out there available. And on top of that, now we have an additional tool which was there in 2020, but not to the extent which we have now. The artificial intelligence. How that artificial intelligence is going to affect all of us, that's another thing which um, we still have to find out as we go along. Because we don't know how much it will be. Even I don't know. I try, I try to learn. I try to stay you know, on top of the things but I myself is still not there yet. And I don't think I ever will be because I'm not an IT guy. Even within the IT, I see all these, some of the people who actually are <laughs> unemployed. Why? Because they have not been able to update their um, knowledge about all this evolving AI and evolving technology. You know, at one point I did programming in computer and I know it is a mad thing pace for everything It is changes so much, you know. So with all this going on, and when you look at how it will affect the elections <clears throat> going in there, every election will get affected, doesn't matter what. 
uh, what country and which way. There are different ways where the effect is going to be some of the misinformation and disinformation is going to be out there. And actually the chat GPT picks up the information which is out there in virtual world. And that information, whether it is right or wrong, it does pick it up and shows to you. And most importantly, another most important aspect is the algorithm being written and monitored and, you know, used by all these uh, uh, tech companies. They actually feed you what you're looking for. So if you, for example, I will give you a perfect example. You on your smartphone, you Google some store, any store, you know, you are doing some shopping and you Google Bloomingdale, Macy's or Nordstrom or J. Crew, whatever your uh, favorite uh, group is, Saks Fifth Avenue. You go to your desktop or your laptop, you will see the same ad coming up from those stores on your desktop or your laptop. That's how that algorithm in the back is so much tuned to you. So now transfer that to politics. If you are looking at a candidate from that perspective, they will feed you what you want to hear, not what you should be hearing, not what you need to know, but what they want you to assume and they want you to know. And this is where, you know, that it comes back to me again and again, that alternate facts, alternate truth. This is what they were talking about, what the alternate truth is. There is, there are, there is only one truth. There is no alternate truth. And this is where that scary alternate truth is becoming a part of uh, everyday life. And what we discuss, what we talk about, what we, uh, you know, uh, make the decisions based on. And that is something which is literally um, scary. You know, as we go further and further, honestly, in next, um, by the time we are in 2024, by 2030, I have no idea where we will be when it comes down to the technology. And believe it or not, we are directly or indirectly being controlled by technology. Just think about it. If you don't have your phone on you, you're like, you're missing something. If you don't have your, you know, smart watch on you, you're like, I'm missing something. We have to look at the overall world picture before we even look at what is happening in the United States and what could happen during the elections in 2024 presidential election. U.S. has been dominating the world stage since World War II. And, uh, you know, as we are closing down to close to 100 years of uh, a superpower dominating, China is challenging U.S. Russia was challenging till Russia was dismantled as a USSR got dismantled and we got Russia. And some of the other states which were part of USSR, they started their own independent, uh, uh, you know, way to go forward. Some of them joined the NATO, some of them are, even though they are part of uh, Russian uh, a hemisphere or influence, but they moved beyond that also. Now China actually is exerting its own, its own pressure. Now to counter China, <coughs> uh, India is being boosted by America. Okay, the industri industrialists, the businesses, they have their interest to how to make maximum money. Yes, they do listen to the people, you know, the governments of different countries, but they listen more to the U.S. government countries because U.S. is the biggest consumer market as of today. 
Uh, yes, we have China, we have India, which are emerging as consumer markets, but they still comparatively to US, they are not there yet. So when we really look at that, so those things which when they influence, they start influencing their decision making process. So what happens? It basically means that, uh, you know, um, China is struggling for the last a couple of uh, years just to get back its, uh, um, you know, that brouhaha about uh, being a country or rising star, okay? And uh, so they have their own interest that who should be the president of the United States. Europe has its own interest. And as far as Trump is concerned, who has won Iowa uh, primary, let's not forget that Trump is the one who said that he will pull out of NATO. NATO actually was created to counter USSR slash Russia. So right now, when we look at it, Ukraine actually is being supported as much as by NATO, as much as by United States, if not less or more. Because NATO countries have their own interest because they do not want to be getting ruled by um, communist way of thinking or Russian way of thinking, if I may say so. But also, they want to retain their independence. That's why within European countries, when you talk about Europe minus England, which actually, you know, um, pulled out, out of uh, a European uh, Parliament, you know, when out of the referendum, still European consortium exerts a huge uh, influence internationally. But at the same time, their interests also collide with the United States' interest because U.S. Um, is not linked with that any other country by land except on the north we have Canada and south we have Mexico. That's it. European continent is actually linked with the, the whole world on the other side except Australia. So when we look at that from that connectivity, China has its own influence in those countries. And uh, when we look at the population growth, China and India, both India actually is on top right now as we talk about population wise. So internationally in educational institutions as well as otherwise in a lot of um, industrial uh, institutions, the people who are, who have their lineage to either China or India, you see more and more people on the top. Look at that person on the top of Google, the World Bank, you know, uh, these are the people, these are the new emerging um, intellectuals who actually will direct the future of the world. And they definitely come from either India or China, majority of them. So as the time passes by, we will see more and more people from these countries, how their way of thinking, how their family's uh, growth and how everything else is going to affect the growth of the world overall. You know, the biggest uh, threat in international trading is from China using AI as well as cloning techniques to clone, you know, China was the first one to uh, use one of the technique which is known as CRISPR uh, to clone uh, an animal. And that is now being used to 
um, pro produce some medications for some rare diseases. So where would it stop? And that is where the artificial intelligence, the human uh, control on it, and how and how much should be pushed, they are all going to clash. In US, we see more consumption of altered food where artificial way of um, insemination is used as compared to Europe, because in Europe, they have more control on what can be sold and what can be fed to the people, which is actually developed in the lab as compared to in the real world. In US, there we are consuming more and more uh, of that. So how it affects, how it will make difference and all. So all these things, you know, I always talk about the old James Bond movies and the new James Bond movies where one person wants to dominate and control the world. One way or the other, we are marching into that direction and technology is playing a major role in doing so. Look at what is happening technology-wise, where we are. In 2007, the iPhone came out, and within 17 years, look where we are. That, you know, basically majority of the people, they really don't need uh, desktops anymore. They have either the laptops or the iPads or the smartphones and they conduct most of their business from there. So all these things, when you put them together and then you look at the elections, there are people sitting behind those devices and they are feeding you constantly. You know, walking out, making a, a TikTok, throwing your idea, even though it, is, it can be a crazy idea, but it's out there. And now all those wars which I was talking about going on in the rest of the world, they actually are going to affect the results of elections in the United States. It is going to make a difference in the UK also. In India, how much difference it will make, I don't know. So I cannot comment on that. But in US, definitely it will make a big difference. Because just look at what is happening, you know, after Hamas um, attacked Israel, look at the whole thing, how it is happening. What happened? Israel is being supported by US as well as uh, NATO countries. They have killed more than 23,000 people and there's not really that much pain being seen in these countries about those 23 plus lives. But yeah, they definitely are talking about that, you know, uh, Hamas attacked Israel first, Hamas attacked Israel first. Yes, I agree. But then again, who created the ground that Hamas was forced to attack Israel? I understand, you know, that uh, Hamas not having Israel as a, on the map, on the world map, then again, who creates the maps? It's us. We can create a map. Look at uh, Jammu and Kashmir. You know, we have uh, uh, two sections of Kashmir between India and Pakistan, and Pakistan, it is uh, uh, Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. That's what they call it in India, and even though they are claiming it is our part, and vice versa. So India has its own map, Pakistan has its own map. So these are the things which are going to be very challenging in 2024 election. And honestly, at this point, I have not put much mind to it or thought about it, that how Trump is going to look at it and how if he gets elected, it will affect um, Houthis, from Yemen, they are attacking uh, the shipping lane in Red Sea. Uh, 
because they are saying that they will not stop till Israel stops bombing Hamas, um, uh, Gaza Strip, not Hamas, I'm sorry for that, the Gaza Strip. Now the question basically is, on, on the north of Israel, uh, Hezbollah from Lebanon, they don't want to start a war with Israel. Now just imagine if that happens, because I'm pretty sure that there is somewhere, somewhere through the back channels, they are being offered some sort of deal to not to get engaged in the war where Israel is pounding Gaza. And there are people already who have been throwing the ideas, including um, Benjamin Netanyahu, who actually is fighting this war as not as a leader to preserve the Israel, but as somebody who is desperate to stay out of jail. Because, you know, every war at the end of the day, there is a discussion, there is a conversation, and you sit down at the table and you come to some sort of agreement. Okay, and they are throwing out the ideas that the Gaza Strip Palestinians, they should not be coming back to Gaza Strip. You know, when in 1948, when Israel was created, a um, lot of Palestinians were forced to leave Israel. And I'm pretty sure that it is exactly the way when, you know, India was divided between India and Pakistan, there were families who thought, oh, we are going to go for some time and then we will come back. They never did. So by pounding Israel, Gaza, Israel is maybe looking at that as an example or something like that, that if Israel succeeds in pushing the majority of the Gaza people into Egypt and Syria, and then stop them from coming back. Israel was already controlling Gaza, so Israel can ultimately, you know, annex Gaza, make it part of um, Israel, like it did a lot of uh, other parts of uh, West Bank, including Jerusalem, you know. So, what actually is happening there is going to affect this place. Why? Because the so-called liberals or Democrats, you know, who are to the left, they are already complaining about that Joe Biden is actually feeding, he's part and parcel of this destruction in Gaza. And they are going to sit home. And that actually reminds me what happened in 2016 the Bernie Sanders people actually literally sat outside. They didn't go out and vote, and we got Trump. And then, like I discussed before, we got three, not one, not two, three justices on Supreme Court. You know, I hate to say it, but Supreme Court actually, I there was a time when it was considered that it is neutral, but for me it was never neutral, but now it is more partisan than any time, in my memory at least. So whatever will come out of Supreme Court, yes, it will become a law. We will be obligated to accept that law. But like they say, you know, you have to take certain things with a, with a pinch, of, pinch of salt that's how those decisions are going to be. So, you know, when Houthis are attacking those um, uh, on those shipping lanes, and U.S. is attacking Yemen, <coughs> nobody's looking at it that there was a civil war in Yemen going on for years. On the one hand, it was Houthis supported by 
like they say by Iran. And on the other side was the person and the group which was actually supported by Saudi Arabia, backdoor US. So now by bombing those uh, locations in uh, Houthi in Yemen, US is doing it openly. Yeah, of course it is like, you know, that we want to keep the channels open, which means what? Again, it is a cycle of destruction which is going on right now, and there are not that many voices who are talking about sanity that let us wait, let us sit down, let us see, let us think about what's going on. Let us put up a break. No, nobody is looking at it. Not which I see, there may be some activities going on in the back door, but at the same time, those activities are not to the scale where these wars can and should be stopped. And if they are not stopped, they, the escalation in these wars is imminent. And then, yes, you know, um, we have uh, very tense relations going on with China uh, as of US, and we should not forget that doesn't matter how much US tries, China, you're always strong in your back door. US has to travel thousands of miles for everything. China does not. So there is only so much US can do. And that's why uh, the investment in India to spur Indian economy and make it strong enough against China. And China actually is inching more and more to the territories which is from India and Bhutan. I was actually reading today again that it is, you know, taking more property which belong to the royal family of Bhutan at point. So on the ground, I don't know, I have not been on the ground, but I'm pretty sure that when these reports come out, there is always some facts to it. So where would this whole thing end up going? Macron, the French president actually is meeting Yelensky, and they are also going to try to work out some sort of agreement to support Ukraine. You know, right now we have economic forum going on in uh, Davos, and the statement given by Zelensky over there is being actually looked at that he is open to some sort of discussion to create some buffer zone between Russia and Ukraine on that territory which is right now being fought for by both. Ukraine wants to recapture it and Russia already has captured. So make that uh, territory as a buffer zone between those two countries and let the third uh, force, you know, be there and let the people live the way they want to live. It's like, you know, mm, to stop that fight temporarily before it actually spins further out and out. And if you really look at it, uh, Prime Minister Modi spoke to uh, Putin in the last uh, 48 hours. Uh, Jay Shankar, the Foreign Minister of India, is already in Iran and they are talking about the port deal where actually India had initially uh, stopped uh, working with it uh, because of the sanctions. And there is a discussion going on to float another alternate currency or something to compete with US dollars. You know, when these things start popping up, it takes years to implement, but if they are out there, it means something would happen. So what does that signify? That signifies that there are people who are right there trying to take advantage of the current situation. And then that situation will be exploited to 
affect the results of elections in those countries by using the media, the social media, TikTok, Instagram, and whatever app there may be out there on the phones. And that is something which is scary, and uh, we don't know. We have to look at it in the future. You know, it's interesting. Um, I'm actually reading right now. Um, there was, uh, you know, I was talking about that how Trump treats everybody. Iowa caucus put him in the front and center of the race right now. And I personally, I have been saying it, and I will say it again, that right now it appears that he will be a Republican candidate for the president. And this 2024 election will be a rematch of the same thing. And he is uh, good at, um, uh, you know, um, threatening the people, using every mean which is at his expense, and hiding behind the immunity being the pre president or the former president. Roger Stone, one of his uh, advisors, who has been, a, you know, a very rich man, probably a billionaire, who has been pumping the money to Republicans, and he was very close with uh, Donald Trump, and he was actually pardoned by President Trump, which means that he cannot be prosecuted for any crime which he might have committed. Even some of the crimes which were not really known yet. And recently a tape came out where in 2020, before the elections, he was, or at least somebody with the same voice, talking about taking out two prominent Democrats who were very critical of Trump at that time. Which actually, you know, uh, makes me think about that how uh, these uh, threats by Trump, they are actually, you know, being considered even by the top-notch, well-educated people, not just somebody on the street or a group of, uh, you know, those uh, extreme right-wing people. So, which means what? Just imagine He's calling the people who were involved in January 6th rising that those are the people who actually were serving the country and they are being held hostages. Just imagine that. You break the law, you get punished, you end up behind the bars, but you are not treated as a person who committed a crime, but as a person who actually is someone who is being held hostage by the opponent group or the party. In this case, a Democrat uh, president, Joe Biden. His re repetition of stolen election, stolen election, you know, that, uh, you know, Joe Biden is not the actual president. It has been so much ingrained in people's minds that a vast number of people, anyway, depending on what poll you believe, from 35% to 60% believe that Joe Biden is not a, you know, legit president who was elected actually with the, you know, those actual votes. Which means what? Which means that if Trump comes back, definitely there are people who are going to lose their rights. And as his attorneys have said in the court, they have submitted in writing that a president cannot be held liable even for a murder when he's the president till he is actually, you know, um, impeached 
and removed. And after the impeachment and removal of that crime, that crime, only then the proceedings can start against him. And I'm not dreaming about it. These are the things which you can check. And that is what he is doing and that is what he is feeding to his followers. So he literally is a figure, not only a divisive figure, but he is a figure who will go to any extent. And he is not running to be the president of the United States. He is running to be the ruler and be a king. And he is not hiding anything. He is openly saying that, you know, he will be dictator on day one, which means what? When you talk about being dictator, which means that your rights are not there anymore. It will be at the pleasure of the king what you do, not what the law says. <clears throat> so when we look at this scenario with all these things going on, it is, yes, it is um, challenging. But at the same time, we should not be giving up any hope. Let me add here what a democratic process is and who is responsible for that. You and I individually, we are responsible to have that democratic process on the rails. I don't mind which group you believe in, what your beliefs are, who you follow, who you want to vote for, but you must, you must go out and vote, whosoever, whatever you choose, because that is how democracies are preserved, not by sitting at home, but by <clears throat> going out and literally w voting on whatever you believe in and uh, whatever you believe in, you got to follow that, those beliefs by following by getting out and voting and propagating what you think, having conversation, discussing, by cutting yourself from a conversation is not going to help anyone at all. You know, uh, in Guru Granth Sahib we have this thing, you know, Thalvetan Vastu Payu Sat Santok Vicharo means that there are three things in a plate, you know, sat, the truth, santok, to have patience, vicharo, to discuss. So that is something which we need to do. And if we don't do that, then we are not being a human being the way we should be, if I may say so. It means that we are just being... Um, like anybody else, regular, uh, where we just uh, have our own uh, um, personal agendas, and that's it. I do understand that we want a better future for the kids. We want a better future for everybody. We want a better world. We want a better U.S. But to achieve that, we have to follow certain things. Just look at where we are as a country uh, today, yes, if we leave out the divisions which we have in the society right now and look at overall where U.S. stands technologically, it is still way, way ahead of our other, other countries. And there is a reason for that. The reason was basically because of freedoms which are guaranteed by the constitution, the freedom of thought, the freedom of speech, the conversation's freedom. And right now, those freedoms are coming under attack by both left and right wing people. I'm not saying that only one group is doing, both are doing it. And 
institution, the educational institutions are actually cutting back on those freedoms. Just imagine that today it is one freedom which is being taken away, tomorrow it will be one more, day after tomorrow it will be another one, where would you end? And that is what under the dictatorship happens that your rights are taken away one at a time. And by the time those rights are taken away and the person who is at the top ends doing that, you're just a mere number which can be killed or put behind the bars without any repercussions or anything. We just need to look at some of the countries where the dictators killed more than 50, 60,000 people, 100,000 people. And at the end of the day, general public paid the price. It is you and I who may end up paying the price. That is what, what I'm afraid of. And that's why what I talk about, even though I put the pieces, try to put the pieces together by grabbing from different things, but at the end of the show, I want to make, understand from my perspective where I'm coming from, that for us, how important that today's decision can be to have the future of our kids a better future than what we have right now. With that note, till next time, good night and good luck. Thank you.